This morning, we're shining a spotlight on the case of Susan Smith. She was convicted back in 1995 for the murders of her two young boys. And next year, the murder mom is up for parole, but her family is not offering much support, saying they're not interested in helping her. And her ex-husband, David, says he plans to file an affidavit urging the parole board to keep her locked up. Wow, she's not getting support from her family. The ones that used to love her, well, she's got lots of folks that love her right now. She's been corresponding with about a half a dozen suitors. One man calling Smith, Dearest Pookie, sent this letter in August. Been thinking of you and miss you so much. Hoping I can do something for you soon. Anyways, feels like it's been so long since we talked. Later concluding, love you so much, it hurts. Your Pookie. Another man allegedly offered Smith a place to live if she is indeed granted parole. Let's break it down with a guy that knows this case very well, the man who prosecuted Susan Smith. Tommy Pope with us. Good morning, sir. Uh, morning. Let's start with uh, her chances at parole. Your thoughts? Uh, you know, I always said I'd never get a job in Vegas handicapping because <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's, it's hard to know. You know, if you look at her behavior in prison, you know, the, the, the highlight or the low light was, you know, having sex with the guard. She's had some drug infractions and different things. Uh, so I think the notoriety of her case, uh, coupled with the, you know, the heinous nature, um, she probably doesn't make it next time, which will be a year from now. Uh, she'll be eligible in 2024. Um, but uh, stranger things have happened. I mean, you you know, watching court, what you think a jury will do, what you think a, the parole board will do, you're never quite sure. Absolutely. So let's talk about those uh, infractions and uh, to what extent they'll come in to the case. She had uh, the, the relations with the guard uh, and uh, was also um, in, in, they had a drug possession incident. Um, disciplined in a couple times but you know she's been in a while uh, to what extent is this behavior uh i guess pull out the sex with the guard part but right, uh, how, right. how much of that is you know goes into the decision making process and i get you can't it's tough every parole board sure. is different etc sure. i think that um you know, it's a factor. I mean, you hate to say it, but you know, probably in prison-wise, that it, there's a lot worse infractions. You know what I mean? Assaulting another inmate, things of that nature. You don't see that. Um, but I think too, the parole board will be taking in the things that you let off with um, the um, David Smith's information. You know, they'll hear from the prosecutor probably. Uh, Kevin Brackett that, that tried the case with me, this the solicitor now, you know, they very well uh, may solicit a letter from me. And my standard is, you know, I believe in truth and sentence and that life should mean life. The jury thought she got life. That that was what they, you know, were told in the courtroom, but that, you know, they did not know she was eligible for parole. And so my, my contact with them will be something to that extent, you know, that um, the sentence ought to mean what it says. What do you mean? Why? Uh, why do you think she has so many suitors out there? Uh, I, this is—it's common. We see it a lot with someone a high-profile defendant has people who fall for them uh, for whatever reason. Any anything about her that stands out? I you know, even back during the case, if you recall the days when we were searching for the carjacker and she was spending time with the sled agents, you know, the state police officers, and they would pick her up, you know, to go um, take the polygraph, for example. Uh, she was flirty with them. I think she, she's got a, a, an ability to kind of be flirty for lack of a better term you know and and i think um she that's what happened probably with the guard you know from what i've read um she i remember one time with a sled agent you know the, the kids are in the lake she's going to take a polygraph and she starts saying i wish you and i were driving to the beach instead of uh you know driving to do this is such a beautiful day and so she's always uh, kind of had that ability with men and uh, i think she's just playing on that she's a siren <laughs> the, uh, ah, drawing them onto the rocks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, one one of her suitors um, said publicly to uh, the the messenger um, said that uh, I don't know why my messages were made public. I just find her interesting and misunderstood. She's not what you think she is. She's a good person who did something terrible when she was young and not in her right mind. People can change. It, I mean, that's pretty accurate with most. 
in May. I mean, a lot of the folks in in our prisons uh, are, are inherently good people that did insanely horrible things, and it doesn't necessarily define their whole life. Correct. I think I think that's accurate. I think what the, that guy said is is accurate. If we're gonna, you know, at least based on my faith, we're sure all seeking forgiveness for something and grace for something. You know, so I think you know people can change, and you know, if these you know guys make that choice and want to befriend befriend her, you know, I I I don't think that's inaccurate. You know, the first thing we always think. Um, I was thinking the case you had the other week. Um, on the death where the, the the guys I guess went back to prison in Peru and he's got a wife and kid down there but he's in prison and you know so somebody some people are drawn to that I don't know whether it's the spotlight or the intrigue or you know maybe they do are wired to to help those that they feel like have not gotten a fair shake but uh, I remember back early Susan had kind of a Facebook page or something like that and she had suitors back then too yeah, Natalie Holloway case and Yuan Vandersloot you're that referring was it. to. That yeah. was it. Um, it is. It's a, amazing. So let's say she does, a, you know, achieve her goal and get out on parole. Knowing what you know about her, is this someone that you would feel comfortable uh, being amongst us? You know, um, some people can get out and go on and live their life. You know, some people have become institutionalized. I think... Uh, she made a horrible, horrible choice and, and committed a, a heinous crime. And, you know, ultimately, the I guess now at this point, the parole board and the jury have decided, you know, what that punishment should be. And so um, I probably would not have her over to my house, nor would she probably want me to come over to hers. So, um, so I, that's about all I can say about that. that it may, makes uh, sense. Uh, in all the cases that you prosecuted, did does this one stand out? Is this one that um, obviously, the, you know, you had the the notoriety of it, so inherently right. it's going to be, you know, always brought up like we're doing today. But is, is this, does this one, is it up there in terms of uh, things you think about? Well, I, I actually don't. I, I, I say tongue in cheek. I remember, you know, one time, uh, you know, because I went on, had other cases, other careers, other people on death row, but, but I, I remember, um, you know, every time something would happen with Susan Smith, people would call me and go, you know, well, I heard she was pregnant. And so my running joke was she may be, but I didn't do it, you know, but, uh, you know, but so we've had, um, I'll, I'll always be the Susan Smith prosecutor for better or worse. You know, for me, it, the case was a loss. I was seeking the death penalty because I felt strongly if David Smith had committed it, the jury, you know, people would want death. If the African-American guy had committed it, people wanted death. So I just, you know, thought she ought to be fed at the same spoon. So that kind of brings me back to the, you know, she, she should serve a life sentence. Mm, interesting, yeah, uh, that that makes perfect sense. Um, Tommy Pope, thank you. Um, you're associated with lots of things, not just Susan Smith, that's for sure. <laughs> Court TV. And, yeah.